I am at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, the state where Dr. Arnold O. Beckman was born and raised. It is 2019, 15 years since the passing of this legendary scientist, inventor, businessman, and philanthropist who inspires me daily. My name is Evgenia, or Zhenya Kozorovitsky. I'm an assistant professor of neurobiology here at Northwestern and the recipient of the 2015 Beckman Young Investigator Award. I am also a recipient of the deep appreciation of Dr. Beckman shared by the scientific awardees of the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation. Not a day passes without my team using the pH meter, the spectrophotometer, or the centrifuge based on Dr. Beckman's designs. Everyone walking through the doors of my lab sees a printout of Dr. Beckman's seven rules for life. When I have to make hard decisions that involve scientific risk, creative leap, or an ethics question, I ask myself, what would Dr. Beckman do? The answer always guides the way to my best self. One of the requirements of the award is to attend the annual Beckman Symposium. At my first symposium, I learned that two-photon imaging can be used in humans to detect abnormal skin cells, an early sign of cancer. These imaging approaches are also crucial for my own science. We use two-photon imaging daily to visualize structures and activity of tiny neurons deep in the brain. But our two-photon imaging systems lie spread out on large tables full of optics. Before attending the symposium, I had no idea that this technology had already been miniaturized and applied to imaging human living cells. This is just one example of how the community of scientists brought together by Dr. Beckman advances my research. Beckman symposia also lead to collaborations that would otherwise never have transpired. For instance, we collaborate with the lab of John Rogers, the material scientist who was a plenary speaker at my very first symposium and I'm now launching a collaboration with Peter Nemes, another 2015 Beckman Young investigator. The legacies of Dr. Beckman and of the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation live on, thanks to the powerful platform of forged connections and knowledge. I received the Beckman Young Investigator Award within a few months of starting my faculty position. It was our first major grant, and it set the stage for many discoveries now continued with federal support including two R01 grants from the National Institutes of Health and an NSF Career Award. My lab focuses on neuromodulatory signaling. Your brain contains billions of neurons wired into complex circuits that communicate electrochemically. These fast transmission circuits are controlled by a set of slower instructive signals, collectively called neuromodulation. These signals include a diverse group of amines, peptides, and even gases that sustain our ability to sleep, eat, move, and learn by changing both neuronal excitability and responses to extrinsic inputs. Fascinating from a basic science standpoint and medical perspectives too, modulation is perturbed in essentially all human mental health and neurological disorders. Our understanding of neuromodulation is limited by its biological complexity including diffuse projections, correleased substances, and diverse timescales of effects. In order to mechanistically understand modulation, we need new, evolving methods to control and evaluate neural activity. My proposal to the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation focused on complex, multi-neuromodulator interactive landscapes. With the support of this award, we have already revealed how dopamine interacts with oxytocin. Dopamine is essential for motor actions and reward-based behavior. On the other hand, oxytocin is critical for affiliative social interactions. In the body, we need it for pregnancy, birth, and lactation. In the brain, oxytocin appears to modulate social actions through mechanisms that remain unclear. My team discovered that the social peptide directly controls dopamine systems. It tunes out the dopamine neurons that are critical for locomotion while turning up the signaling of cells that code for pleasure and reward. We describe the system in the journals Neuron and eLife. The postdoc who started this work already has his own lab and I've recruited the second generation of trainees to continue this line of research. I would also like to mention just one key area of our tool development work. We engineer new optical systems for rapid functional fluorescence neuroimaging, emphasizing design simplification, low-cost architecture, and open-source hardware and software. 
Such inventions tend to reach large scientific audiences, something that I think Dr. Beckman would have appreciated. Versatile imaging systems continue to be limiting in neuroscience. Classic two-photon imaging is slow, while other methods are computationally demanding and do not provide real-time visualization. We've developed a new approach, Scanned Oblique Light Sheet Microscopy, or SOPI for short. We've published two papers on that with a few patent applications forthcoming. Some university cores have already implemented SOPI in their imaging systems, and we are using it for rapid 3D imaging of neural signal integration and neuromodulation across many biological systems while we continue further improving our custom microscopes. The Beckman Young Investigator Award and this amazing community of scientists and inventors have inspired our imaging tool development besides guiding every other aspect of my science. The book Arnold O. Beckman, 100 Years of Excellence, lives in alternation between my office and my home as a continued source for this inspiration and gratitude.